Good morning, gentlemen. It's Laxor again. Welcome back, everyone. And this stream, death stream, is a little bit of an interesting one because I was actually able to make it this time for once um, to the stream itself. So I pestered Mike with questions. I'm not going to put all of them in there. If you want to see all my questions that I had for him, um, check out the stream. It's on twitch.tv slash last epoch game. That's where you'll find his stream. And I'm just going to cover a bunch of them, a bunch of things I ask. And mostly what we're actually going to go over is mostly my questions, I think. Um, because, to be honest, the other questions were a bit... We already covered all of this already. So this is not just for bragging rights or because I like myself so much. It's just because <laughs> I had some different questions um, for once. But let's first start right away with the first teaser. I'm not even going to let him talk here. Um, the first league, rather, for the next cycle was Circle of Fortune rank 10 has been reworked. Right now, for example, in the COF, if you have rank 10, which actually takes a while to get there, right? Then you just have um, double the drops on your prophecy. But it doesn't mean, for example, that if you drop a 2 LP great item, that it's duplicated, right? It just means you get twice the drop. So your chance is higher to find something. Um, but you usually just find more shit. <laughs> usually just find more uniques with no LP or the wrong ones. So the rank 10 is not really that good right now in COF. Even though it takes so long to get there. So I like that they changed it to this. This is a new one. Boss loot upgrade. Bosses have 150% increased drop rate for any specific rewards they have. That is awesome. Because if you feel like I needed, I don't know, 15 or 20 attempts on the Emperor of Corpses to finally get my Twisted Heart of Ukeros. That took so long. And with this, we now have a higher chance that they actually drop the good stuff. That's all we want, right? And it's actually 150% is quite a lot. So I like this a lot. That's a great, great change. Uh, will 1.1 show the corruption level on each monolith on the map? I don't know if we've actually added that. Uh, there was, uh, there was things that happened in a design meeting where it comes up very briefly and you talk about it and you can't quite remember what you landed on. That's what's happening here. Um, I think we talked about it. I think there was a reason why we can't do it. I don't think it's happening. I can't remember why. That's painful. And that was obviously my question. Um, because I... Like, I hate the fact that on here, I cannot see what corruption I have on these monoliths. You know? I would like to see that ending of Storm... Oh, wait. I think it's... Yeah, the Reign of Dragons. I think I have 160 or something. Um, this is even at 200 or more than that. And I just want to know for each character, before I go in there, which one I have. Now, it's not a big deal, of course. But it would be a nice addition. Uh, are you open to adding funny cosmetics like a spacesuit or sexy stuff? Or will the game always stay on serious levels? Um, I don't like funny serious is generally not the axis that we that we tend to look at there. More of a um, like like in universe does it make sense? So like uh, spacesuit and sexy stuff probably not. Uh, that's the sort of stuff that we are very uh, we're intentionally avoiding. Um, but, you know, like, I, having stuff be a little bit of a joke, uh, I, I think that's the sort of stuff we're, we're, we're open to. Um, you know, I think having, uh, yeah, th th things that are, like, maybe, maybe poking fun at Last Epoch itself, maybe there was, like, some bug that happened, uh, and, and having, like, a cosmetic that goes along with that bug or something like that, um, but still like makes sense in universe i think is the important part for us so like we're still um because there's no astronauts in the terra uh we we, we don't want to have a spacesuit you know i think that's a bad decision in my eyes um and aaron also said that apparently they have said before that they will never do the um what's it called the lost arc kind of stuff so let's go for google lost arc sexiest outfits for example Images. So this kind of stuff they would never make for Last Epoch, right? Now, again, this is an old topic. Do every character, like female characters, have to be sexualized? I don't want to go too deep into this topic. Let's just say <laughs> the, 
that especially ARPG players are, I think, 97% male, something like that. So what's wrong with having that? Because the, the problem I have with this is, why do games always have to be so serious, right? Of course, this is not Fortnite, and I don't want this to be Fortnite in any stretch of the imagination. But what's wrong with a funny, cool, or even sexy outfit for the characters? For the rogue or for the necromancer? Now, both of them are not very sexualized right now. They don't even look that good in my eyes. <laughs> but, um, of course, it doesn't have to be that. They don't have to wear high heels or whatever. But like, I don't know, something like maybe a little bit more clothes on that, but just a little bit of lag showing or whatever. What is so bad about that? And why does this not fit with the style of the game? Why is it impossible for people in Etera to wear a cool, like for a necromancer, to wear a cool sexy outfit like that? Why is that such a problem? Or some sort of spacesuit, right? Or a super over the top warrior armor that is super crazy whatever but also looks a bit funny why does it always have to be so serious it's so weird to me i don't understand why why ehg is doing this because not just because the horny stuff obviously draws in more people obviously it's also just you playing this character and you want to have fun with the game why not make it look good people love beauty beauty is what drives everyone even though Society is doing a really hard job and trying very hard to get this out of our mind. But people always follow beauty. It's in nature. It's everywhere. This is what we strive for when we search a partner. The first thing is always what you see, right? So why is this such a big deal? I never understand this. And especially because later he will also mention that future cities are technically possible. Or still on the table for like echoes that you have sky skyscrapers or whatever because it actually is time travel right in last epoch. So this is possible, but spacesuits are not possible because it doesn't fit the game. So I think this is not because it doesn't fit into the sort of Etera kind of thingy. I just think they don't want to have this. Do I even say it? Yeah, I think they are afraid or maybe they are even driven by some sort of consultant company maybe and um, there was something before with ehg um, with another charity which was definitely against the whole gamergate thing of people pushing back against all the trans stuff or woke stuff being pushed in their games and they just want to have good looking female and male characters so I don't know if this is really a thing for HG, right? But it sounds a lot like by how, how they deal with it. Now, they could just not care about all this stuff and it's just wanna, don't want to have anything like this in their games. But I don't understand the reason, right? What's wrong with that? If people like it, and people have been asking about the gender swaps a lot for all the characters, like a female paladin or a male uh, rogue assassin kind of stuff. Um, they still said they won't be doing it yet. Um, so this <laughs> will most likely never happen. But what's wrong with that, right? I mean, what? Like, literally, the question is, what is wrong with that? Why does this not fit into a Terra? Why could the Necromancer not wear something like that? So, in my eyes, the argumentation is pretty much flawed. What he's saying there, I don't believe that at all. That it doesn't fit. Because um, you could, could easily make it fit into the game. There must be another reason why they don't want to have it. Whatever. Since you have time travel in the game, have you ever thought about going into the future? Oh, yes. Uh, like in a big skyscraper city for an Echo. Uh, I know swords don't quite fit there, but still. Yeah, there's... Um, <laughs> yes, we have considered going to uh, to the future. It's, it's not off the table. It is possible. Um, I, w I wouldn't expect it anytime soon. That's sort of a, like... We've, we've done... We've been around for for five years, and we've done the, the storylines we had planned for the the eras that are here, and we're like looking to branch out and try something that's a little out there, a little wacky, a little different. Um, you know, it's 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 a, a time like that that we'd more be interested in, in looking at the options that are out there for us, and and those those are potential things we can look at. Whoops! I didn't mean to do that. Specifics. Okay. Um. So yeah, there it is again. Pretty much what I said before, 
First of all, it's not off the table. That's great because I would love to do that. On the other hand, again, doesn't make sense for me that you can go into the future with skyscrapers or like current time even, if in or any sort of era in Etera. Like it has the ancient times with dragons, but why could it not have the future with like proper buildings, right? I mean, we have buildings in here, as you see on the screen. There is a divine era where people had buildings. There's the ancient era. Um, there is the immortal era and all this. So people had buildings. So eventually human civilization would figure out how to make better buildings over time, right? I would guess, even with all the magic happening. Of course, this is all fantasy and fiction, so it doesn't have to go that route. I get it. But it would be cool, wouldn't it? Then again, it's been five years, he said, since they've been around and they still haven't done it. Because they're set with the arrows if they have to right now. This is kind of discouraging when it comes to this stuff. But I think if they would do this, this would probably be in three years. Two, three years. When they've done everything of the core game, they have all the core stuff in there and then just have time on their hands to do new stuff, that crazy stuff. Then they will probably think of going into the future with Echoes or whatnot. But still not gonna do spacesuits, right? That's just weird. And this is again why I don't buy this uh, explanation that it doesn't fit the Aterra um, style. Uh, will we get void damage for all classes eventually? Um, maybe? Uh... I don't think so. I eventually, <laughs> people ask questions. I'm like, well, "Ever's a long time. Will we ever get it? Maybe." Um, there's the, the 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 big one that I'm like, why I'm tempted to say no. We won't ever do it. Um, it really doesn't fit very well on Primalist at all. It's like, mm, no. Um, but but you know, nothing's a hard no, really. So maybe. We, are, we already have some items that do it on mage a little bit. There's, 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 some, there's some sprinklings of some void stuff on mage a little bit. Sentinels obviously void. Um, a lot of people thought Warlock was going to be void thing, but not. Um, but I think that shows that there's at least a community uh, desire or uh, feeling that it's thematically appropriate at least. Um, yeah, key thing, Mike. Key thing, there's a community desire to do that. And I'm sure there's also a community desire to have different genders for... Like, both genders for the characters, right? Or maybe some cool skins. I'm not gonna <laughs> ramble on this whole, whole video, okay? But just it just doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, interesting though, um, they want to add void damage. He didn't say no to all of them. My question wasn't really... I mean, I asked if all classes would get it. I was just more sort of the idea if... Void damage is being pushed on other classes as well. For example, right now for the mage, for the mage, there are items that do it. There's, I don't know what it's called, the, the staff that gives you void damage and it turns your volcanic orb into void. And I'm going to post a build about this as well with the spell blade. Actually, kind of cool. So there are some things where you can do this already. The problem is, in this game, it still is. In most cases, if you switch a damage type with an item, it's usually worse than the original dam damage type. Um, because all the not all nodes fit on this properly and all that. So I was just wondering if there will be masteries. Maybe I should have phrased my question differently. Masteries for all the classes that will eventually have some sort of void theme. Um, I can see why they wouldn't think of this yet, but in this case, even a corrupted primalist could have that in my eyes that could spawn, I don't know, void, <laughs> a void scorpion or whatever. Um, I, I could totally see this happening. That he's been corrupted through time, through things. Why not? Right? It can happen to anyone. So um, I'm different on this. I think it could totally be happening. But it wasn't a hard no. I know it's not coming anytime soon. By the way he phrases it, if anything, it's going to be with items. And he said new masteries will be coming, but it's going to be a while. So um, right now we're really sort of getting trickled new stuff. But if you come back to this game in like two years... I think there will be a lot of great stuff for it, even the crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just nice to hear that they are thinking of it and it's not a hard no on these things. There is a second teaser for Cycle 2. And this is Mage base class, apparently. 
Resurgence. If you start channeling Disintegrate while having at least one stack of Lucomancer, it starts at tier 2. If you also have the Amplification node and at least two stacks of Lucomancer, Disintegrate starts at tier 3 instead. So I don't know what these other nodes mean, so this doesn't really tell us that much in my eyes, uh, like the Lucomancer. I don't know what that is. I think that's a new one as well. But what I like about this is like they already posted a screenshot of the reworked Disintegrate passive tree so that's going to change a lot for the mage and i kind of like that they're also looking a little bit into channeling abilities because currently they are pretty bad most of them because in last epoch it is still important that you are moving most of the time to avoid damage or to even gain damage right so um channeling abilities i still feel a bit lacking in most cases because it's you're always just at such a disadvantage if you stand still Especially depending on the items, because uh, the items, the enemies, because they are a lot of items do have, especially rare uh, item, uh, rare bosses. I can't talk, man. What the hell? They do have a lot of sort of AOE damage you have to avoid because it does a lot of damage. Like if you think of the lightning elemental, right, uh, or the scale bane saboteur. This is damage you can just dodge by moving, and with this you can't. So the ghost flame for the necromancer, uh, the acolyte rather, does it really well. That's a good channeling ability right now, but um, I hope they're looking more into these things as well because it's technically a cool mechanic, but there is such a huge drawback. You have to get a huge bonus from channeling abilities. Uh, is idle crafting in the works or is it down the road? It's down the road. Um, I, 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 we, 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 we have not set in stone what idle crafting is going to look like yet. Um, at some point there will, will very likely be some way to affect the stats on your idols in some form or another. Um, my personal favorite for that right now is as a dungeon reward. Um, possibly as a series of dungeon rewards or like a uh, dungeon with multiple entrances that can do different things based on which one you go to or you know, uh, I, I don't know how, it's, how it would look but I, I would personally really like to see it uh, in the game and I think the best way to add it is as a dungeon reward. Um, but maybe not. Maybe maybe it, there's some other mechanic that, that that comes in as like a cycle mechanic, and um, as part of that cycle, you can uh, craft idols with with some mechanic that comes. In. I don't know. Um, we haven't got that far with it. Um, we kind of like eh, someday we'll we'll have it. <laughs> yeah, you have it. Someday you'll have it. Yeah. Um, by the sounds of it, it doesn't even come until like 1.4. I mean, I don't know how much, how big of a deal this actually is to make it. Maybe they will sprinkle it in between, but it's not on the roadmap or anything. And 1.4 is still about a year away, right? Or more. So um, that's tough because idle drops right now are still pretty bad in most cases. I think um, you you have to use the COF or the Merchant's Guild to get good idols in my in my in my experience anyway um the drops are usually pretty like you get the idols you want but the rolls on it are so bad for me maybe it's just my bad luck i don't know um but i have a tough time finding good idols and crafting i would like now i don't know why it ha always have to be a dungeon reward to do that because especially for idols you want to have more than just one so you want want me to run the dungeon eight times to craft a good idol to get craft good idols i mean that's kind of kind of shitty um, because like with legendary items, you usually have maybe one or two you want to craft. So you run the Temporal Sanctum one or tw once or twice to get your legendary items. But with idols, I want to have more than that. So I don't know. I can see why I would sort of put some sort of barrier behind it to even get there, of course. But, um, anyway, he said it's completely open. We don't know anything about it yet, but they will do it. That's for sure. When? We don't know, but it is coming. So, what we can gain from all these streams over the last weeks, sort of, is the new cycle, it won't just have these three things they mentioned on the roadmap, right? Like the Pinnacle Boss system, the Nemesis system, and the Evade Dodge Roll thingy. Um, these are the three main things, I guess, but there will be much more. We don't know what, and I guess they do this intentionally to over-deliver, and that's great. There will also be a lot of passive changes and all that. No new skills, but a lot of skills being changed. So there is a lot, for me at least, to do with new builds. And for you to test new builds and run new builds. That's great. Um, but still, we have to be honest with ourselves here. As you can tell, also by the roadmap, 
next three seasons will most likely still just flashing out the core game, right? There is no... I mean, there is new content coming, right? But it's not like a, a, a new season for Path of Exile right now, for example. That just adds new crazy stuff because the core game has been done for 10 years, right? So don't make the mistake to expect the same level of that. Because even though Last of, uh, Last of Epoch... Last Epoch has been around for five years already in beta, and they've come a far way, for sure. Still, the core game is being fleshed out. If you look at the roadmap, 1.4, I think, is going to be sort of the, the measure stick. At that point, the core game is finished, because then you also have the transmog system, right? And then, in the background, it just got locked out of Last Epoch. Huh? And then you can focus on doing new stuff. I hope... I really hope we also get uh, both genders for the classes with 1.4 before that, because I think that's actually a big thing for people. Because people, especially with the transmog system, right? So I could see that happen simultaneously. Um, because with the transmog system, they have to also change all the animations and or like change how things work and how things are set up. So I can see why you would also throw this in there. So maybe with 1.4. And people just love to customize the characters, right? Because after all, if you play a role-playing game, it's not just because you want to have fun with that. It's also because you want to escape reality and sort of live a fantasy where you are the hero in this game. So you want to sort of either... Either want to create a character that is yourself, like a sort of... Like living that character with a male assassin rogue or whatever, or even like a male necromancer, if this is your kind of stuff. Or you just want to live... Uh, a fantasy as the other gender right because if you're a man you cannot be a woman right so living that out in this game as a female character for example it's just something that drives people and you see this every arpg really has this so i think last epoch is sort of the only one where you can't do it and if you look at lost ark for example when you can't switch the gender of the character itself then you have male and female as just classes right like, you have the warrior as a male and a female. It's not that you can swap the gender in between the class. You just have both classes with the different genders. So, I think this is important. It may not, it may not look like it, because, you, of course, I want to focus on gameplay more than that. I think games, after all, are for people to escape and to live fantasies and to live in a dream world where they can try new things. For example, being a woman, because in real life, you can't. So, um, I think this is much more important than he gives it credit to. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. I think um, they should actually focus a bit more on that because that also draws people in. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of it. This was it for today. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. I will see you next week with the same stream, but also check out the coming videos. I have a lot of great builds, build guides planned still. And of course, going towards the cycle, the next cycle on July 9th, there will be a lot more Last Epoch content than usual already anyway, right? Because why not? I see you around.